Hello guys, Dinosaur here, welcome back to the channel, and uh, today we are going to discuss um, the number 11. So, uh, it's uh, been going around YouTube and everywhere that a lot of Christians are seeing the number 11 and seeing it as a sign from God. Others say it is Satan doing his manipu manipulative work, which begs the question... Is seeing the number 11 biblical? Well, the short answer is, of course, God speaks in numbers all the time. The original language, the Hebrew language, the Old Testament, each num each letter in the Hebrew alphabet is also a number. Alev, which is the equivalent of the letter A, uh, is also the number one. Tav, the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and the last number of the Hebrew alphabet is also the number 22. And from there it adds on, because they have no more letters. So they just add the value of each letter each time the numbers go up. But, and uh, a YouTuber I watch, Ultimate Mordecai, he reports seeing the number 11 a lot. Ever since watching this channel, I've noticed it a lot, too. Now, the number 11 can have different meanings when you're seeing it. It In the Old Testament, it was often, it was often a sign of judgment or God's wrath. In the New Testament, however, it's often how God um, refers to... Um, it's often how this God describes relationships. For example... His relationship with us. And, uh, and open my Bible and flip to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Ah, here we are. But he who hath. Oh, and again. 1 Corinthians 6.17 But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Now, what does that have to do with the number 11, you ask? Well, when you receive Christ, your spirit and the spirit of the Lord are joined together as one. You look like two, but you are one. You, are not act you might not actually be one, but you are considered one by God. You are one. You are two different numbers, but you are one. And that's what the, the number 11 is. The number 11 is two ones joined together as one number. And also, the number 111 can also be used to describe God, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They are three, but they are one, just not in a way we are capable of understanding. But this, this is, but, you know, the Spirit, the Spirit and the Spirit of the Lord, your spirit and the spirit of the Lord joined together as one. That's a bit of an easier concept to grasp. And backing it up is um, the Hebrew language itself. You see, the number 11 in English is actually a mixture of two words. The Hebrew word El, which means God aligned, and the English word even, which means, you know, even or aligned. You put it together and it means God aligned. Now, as I said, the letters in Hebrew are also numbers. This is this is Aleph, the first number in Hebrew. So the number one. It looks the number one or the letter A. And it kind of resembles an X. But also, if you look more closely, you can kind of see a picture of an ox. Now, somewhere in the New Testament, Jesus said take my yoke. Now this is symbolic to the cross. For, for visual aid, here's a picture of two ox. They are two different ox right now, but when you join them together with a yoke, join them together with a yoke, what do you get? The cross. 
And this, and this is also symbolic to the number 11, your spirit and the spirit of the Lord being joined together as one through the cross, because it was because of what Jesus did on the cross that we can have salvation. Seeing the number 11 from, in the Old Testament perspective meant wrath. From the New perspective, from the New Testament perspective, it's often how God describes relationships and specifically our relationship with Him. But also, in the Old Testament, you can find God using the number 11 to also describe human relationships like the husband and wife. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. As soon as I find that, here it is. Wait, what? Oh, this, here it is. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So you got, so you got the man and the woman joined together as one flesh. They look like two, they are one flesh in the sight of God. So the number, numbers can have different meanings depending on what God is trying to communicate. And sometimes it can be a good thing, sometimes it can be a bad thing. But one thing is for sure, the number 11 does not belong to Satan. We've developed, I mean, sure, the number 11 can be used by Satan, because you can join yourself with him just as easily, but you want to avoid that. But don't be afraid of seeing the number 11. As long as you know for a fact it's from God. How can you know it's from God? Because when you are, when you have received Christ, you are joined together with him as one. The number 11. If you are seeing the number 11 in that way, then it's perfectly biblical. Or, if, or from a marriage perspective. Man and woman joined together as one. That is also biblical. You see, we've developed a legalistic way of thinking a lot of us as Christians, and we want to give everything to Satan. We're demonizing what belongs to God, and we shouldn't do that. It's like the rainbow. Most Christians are afraid to even say a rainbow is pretty. Now, I understand homosex the homosexuality thing, and yes, it is a sin, And but there is hope for homosexuals as well. But we're definitely not helping our case any, by demonizing the rainbow, it belongs to God. It's a symbol of his promise. Are, are the homosexuals demonizing it? I guess. But we're, but we're not helping it by uh, refusing to acknowledge a rainbow every time we see one. Same with the number 11. If we call it a sign of Satan all the time, then we've basically given it to him. You can't demonize what belongs to God. The only number that belongs to Satan is, in the Bible, 666. God said, let Satan have that, but don't let him have you or anything else. Don't give anything else to Satan. The number seeing the number 11 is biblical. And last night, I saw, I've been struggling with some personal issues. And last night, on the clock of my phone, and I took a screenshot of it, and I'll show you in a moment. But as I was getting ready to charge my phone... I was putting it on charge. God showed me the... Hold on. It's a little too bright. Oh, wrong picture. Oh, come on. God showed me the number 11 on the clock. Now, me and this person that I really care about I was shown the number 11 uh, on my phone, in my wallpaper. And uh, I'm not going to talk about it in detail, but let's just say that seeing the number 11 gave me hope and that God is not going to let me down. But I want you guys to know that the number 11, or seeing any kind of number as a sign from God, is not unbiblical. In fact, it's only... It's only unbiblical and it's only from Satan if it is causing you to sin how is it causing you to sin well making an idol out of it for one thing but
that you know what this but I trust that those of you watching this video know what know what is a sin and what's not. But if you are committing a sin out there, there is hope for you. All you have to do is receive Christ. You know, and all you have to do to do that is two things. Repent and trust in Jesus alone for your salvation. How do you repent? It comes from the Greek word metanoia. Change your mind. Change your mind about God. Change your mind that you do need a Savior. And then invite Jesus into your life. And then trust only in Him for your salvation. Trust that His righteousness has become your righteousness. Not not your righteousness earning you salvation, but His. Because when you receive Christ, your spirit and His spirit are joined together as one. You are the number 11. You look like two, but you are one. And God sees you as one. That is why when you are saved, you are called guiltless. Guys, I hope this video has blessed you. And if you find it interesting and want me to talk more about it, let me know in the comments. See you guys again soon. God bless.